Hey guys, Suraj here from Random Tales. Uh, today we're gonna talk about how to stay happy in life. So without much further delay, let's directly get into the topic. Okay, now how to stay happy in life. I really wish there was a demigod or a god written book on how to stay happy in life so that every one of us in the entire world could have followed a certain rules and regulations written by a god or any of the prophets who are out there. But unfortunately, we don't have any books like that. So each and every person sets a boundary to himself on what he does or what makes him happier than making him sad. Uh, it depends from person to person, right? The same way there are certain things that makes me happy and is that is what I'm going to share it with you all today. First thing is controlling your anger. Uh, I wouldn't say suppressing the anger. There's a lot of difference between controlling and suppressing. Most people when they are pissed at something or, or when they are angry or when they just have a lot of temper just because something has happened uh, in that situation, Many, many a times people suppress it. Now, according to me, what happens when you suppress an anger is you might not look in a furious manner at that particular situation, but then that suppressed anger continues to tag along with you on various occasions. And then there'll be one situation where you just burst out. Rather, I would ask you not to suppress your anger, but then say it out openly at that particular situation because it's rightful for you to express your way but then don't express it in a very bad way. What do I mean in a very bad way is do not break things, don't throw your cutleries or, or don't try you know, to use swear or cuss words to the opposite person who's involved in that conversation with you or in the situation which you are at. Instead, try and telling them in a much more smoother way. You can also bring out your anger in a much smooth way, which is 100 times more effective than how you are when you use cuss words and throw things at other people. Because what happens in scenarios where you throw things or break things is, it does not show what the other person's mistake is, but then it shows who you are to the world, right? And you do not want to be a bad person in, in, in terms of my eyes or in terms of anyone else who's around watching at you, right? Also, that is not our motivation. You're angry because there's something wrong that's happened to you or there is something that insulted you at that particular situation. Instead of becoming furious like a Hulk, don't be, don't be furious, just say it in a much more politer way. Just go to the person who is actually responsible for your insult or anger. Talk to him, explain him why you feel that way and ask him what's his point of view and why did he even say that to you in the first place for you to understand if you had made any mistakes. Now imagine there's, there's a situation where you're almost at the verge of becoming pissed but then you actually don't act in a weird way you instead go talk to the actual person who's responsible for this whole scenario, which makes much more smoother, right? You go talk to the person, you sort it out and you go back home and sleep peacefully, right? Rather than thinking about it, that person insulted me, that person made me scream. And also according to me, I believe that no person is worth to make you anger, right? You shouldn't give anyone that liberty where they easily know the switch for you or off you to make you go mad or to make you become pissed, right? You shouldn't give that liberty to anyone to just make you act like a robot or make you act like how they want to, right? That's that's my personal opinion. Now, the second point is never take or even give any advice for a matter of fact. Why do I say that is when I say never take any advice, I'm not trying to tell don't take any advice from your parents or from you know your sister or from your wife. That's not what I mean. Uh, let's say you want to take a risk. For example, you want to quit your day-to-day -day job, which is your nine-to-five job, and you want to get into something which is of your own passion, right? At particular, at, at those point of times, you would tend to ask a lot of advices to many people, or you know your higher authorities, or even for a matter of fact, even to your family relations and everyone. And I wouldn't suggest doing something like that when you're trying to take a risk. 
go ask and advise if you are in in a plan of doing your education or something like that it still makes sense but let's say that you are following something and in order to follow that you have to take a great risk then never depend on anyone else's word because tomorrow in case you fail just because you listen to your dad or just because you listen to your mom that will affect you big time because this is not this was not your sole decision right you happen to do this because you felt that your dad had advised you or your friends had advised you or your higher authority had advised you and it made sense to you and you got into it but later if it does if if it didn't work out then it's just going to be a big thing for you right because you won't even have the satisfaction you failed because of you it it would be like you failed maybe because i had listened to the advice that the other person had said so this is the sole reason uh, which i believe that i would never take any advice in case i'm taking risk for example let's say that i'm entering into a stock market and i'm trying to buy a stock which has a lot of volatility in the industry i wouldn't firstly go ask my mom or dad regarding this one thing they don't know about the stock market for them to judge and give you an advice they need to know something about it right they don't know what exactly a stock market is and the next thing is let's say that i take the stock just because my mom asked me or advised me to do so and i fail a huge amount of money i cannot recover it in that particular day and it's a huge loss for me i wouldn't have that satisfaction that i lost because that was not my decision that i it, it, though it was my decision to go and ask the advice to my parents it was still not a 100% decision that i wanted to go in right because i was somewhere anywhere between 40 to 50% and the rest 60% confident was from my dad and mom's advice or my friends advice at this scenario i would feel really sad on not you know winning and losing about it because i would just be like i lost it because i trusted the advice that my mom and dad gave which was solely your mistake right because they don't even know what stock market is about so that is the main reason why i say never take advice and the same goes never give an advice to anyone because the same scenario happens to you let's say you give an advice and that particular person who's taken an advice from you fails just because you had given him or you had asked him to do something like that you still would feel miserable because it was only because of you that the person did something and it didn't work out for him for example he would uh, an xyz person or your friends would come and ask uh, hey uh, i want to start up a business what do you think about it and you would be like oh, it's good just go and start it up let's see i mean i know bill gates i know jeff bezos who started amazon and microsoft and they all started from a garage and now they're all billionaires and they're world's richest man you start you start giving him so much of motivation and so much of confidence that that person quits his day to day job enters into a business works really hard for 3 to 4 months and never makes a penny and on the 5th month all of his resources or his management of money is all nil he has to he has to literally shut his business and then get back to a 9 to 5 job again which is really painful right so whenever someone asks you advice as well try restraining yourself as much as possible uh, don't give them all these sort of fancy uh, motivations or advice tell them on phase it's always better to tell it on phase that this might work this might not work rather than trying to motivate them because at the end of the day you will see that person suffer right because deep inside your heart you know that it might not work out but then you just say it for the sake that the person might feel better don't never do that because later it is you who will also be impacted by the failure of the the person that you had advised right uh this is this is the second reason the third one is be confident on what you do for example a lot of people have inferior complex right like what do i mean by inferior complex he or she would never feel that they're good looking or they're not you know good at speaking or they're not good at presenting something or they're not good at conveying something or explaining things for example i know a lot of people in my friend circle who wanted to start up a youtube video start up vlogs do multiple things in front of a camera but then they're not confident on how how they might look in front of the camera or how they might even be able to express it in front of a camera because they lack confidence that's one thing and another thing is let's say you set a goal 
For example, in the year 2022, you want to at least have a savings of 5 lakh in your bank balance. Like only your bank balance should be 5 lakh at the end, at the end of 2022. Uh, you have to be really confident in achieving it, right? You can't just take it on the day of Jan 1st, like a new year resolution and never work, uh, you know, in terms of it and just be like, I took a resolution, let's see if I can make it. That way you're never going to make it, let me put that straight. You have to be really confident, you have to work hard for it, you have to be smart at a couple of places. You also have to have a lot of quantitative uh, analysis and sense for you to go further and for all of these things like your analysis analytic uh, approach to something needs a lot of confidence right without confidence you won't be able to achieve something and you will only tend to dream but not achieve and in fact it might look like a failure to you which in return will give you a depression and not make you happy correct so always be confident when you're doing something never give up it it might not be the right time for you maybe now but never give up let's say that i started doing this youtube thing uh, and i wanted to badly do it when i was in my 10th standard which is five years back i couldn't do it but i still never gave up i went to a job worked really hard saved up some money, got the camera, got the tripod stand and now here I am doing videos. I have no idea if I might even get one or two views but still I'm confident enough that I, I am going to come up with a YouTube video, I'm going to put it out and I really don't care uh, if I might become, if, if I might get a million subscribers or a million views. My goal was not to put out my content to a million viewers but then my goal was just to do a video and put on YouTube, right? Now that's my goal and I was confident about it. I'm not trying to boast here on what I accomplished, but then I'm just giving you as a real life example that you have to be confident and time does sort of uh, tests you over a period of time because let's say you want to become a cricketer and you want to go play to the Indian uh, team. It'll never happen within a year or two. And what happens between these year or two, the person might lose the interest he might uh, get a lot he might lose a lot of confidence and and over a period of time the person might even quit but the same person who joined with him who never gave up who never lost interest would have been there in the coaching for almost five years and the sixth year he goes to an indian team now that's what i mean it might not happen within a year or two it does definitely take time but over this period of time as time is testing you never lose confidence that's that's my third thing for you to stay happy and the fourth thing is, let's say you're all confident and it never happened. It's always okay to lose. We are not in a competition world. Please understand that no lord or no inspirational big uh, persons that we admire of, for example, like uh, Mahatma Gandhi or uh, Vivekananda, all of these persons, they don't, they've never said you always have to keep winning, right? It is okay to lose and just take it with a great open hearted that you, you just lost. It's okay, let's try it again and not give up and then break down and then sob about it the entire month or the entire year. I know a lot of people who's even lost their lives just because they lost at something. They might have flunked in POC, they might have flunked in their SSLC or 10th standard exam, they might have flunked in their IAS exam, it's okay to lose. Um, it, maybe something else is written for y'all, right? I, I don't want to say words and talk like a guru, but, but I'm just trying to say that it's okay to lose. I wanted to be a great businessman at the age of 24, like a Mukesh Ambani. I'm right now 24. I'm not as great as Mukesh Ambani. I've lost. I've lost it. Maybe I tried a couple of things and it didn't work out for me. It's okay. I'm I'm still not gonna give up on that hope, right? I might try hard and still put put, put all of my uh, effort and hard work. And now my goal from 24, I've just extended to the age of 30, 35. I'm still alive. The only thing that you should worry of not losing is your life because if that goes, then you won't be able to achieve anything. But since you have your life in you, there's still time. There's still a lot of hope around. There's still a lot of people to support you. And you still have a lot of things in your mind which will help you to achieve that goal. Maybe if not now, later in life. So that is something that I always follow and I'm, I'm always happy by doing so. I've never regretted on losing something nor felt sad. In fact, I've been happy a couple of times on losing something because that's taught me a lesson where I might not repeat the same mistake that I did 
ever again in my lifetime so that is something really good and that's the fourth point that i wanted you all to understand now the fifth one is respect others with a, no attitude let's say that uh, you have achieved everything in your life and you came all the way from underground to a height where uh, it's really if 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 in if in case someone else looks at you they'll feel it's really impossible to achieve something like that but when you get to that point or when you achieve something or when you succeed at something don't throw that attitude to person because let's say that you did something like that right in front of me when i am also trying to achieve and you throw attitude at me i'm going to make a note of it if if in case i'm a person who likes revenging or something like that i'm definitely going to make a note about it and when i achieve and come to a point which is close to you i will indeed take revenge right that's that's how humanity is i'm not trying to say that i might but that's how most of the people or humanity is about right so never throw your attitude always respect others respect your elders respect someone who's not as good as you but who's trying to do something in life if not supporting them in terms of other things at least don't throw your attitude to them because that hurts them and like everyone else says karma is a boomerang whatever you have achieved today is not going to be a full proof you might fall any time you never know you might have become a billionaire but then you might lose everything and become a bankrupt there is no full proof for anything that you become right anything and everything is it's 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 goable right including your life you never know if you're going to even be alive tomorrow so keeping all this in mind never throw your attitude and many a times even if you throw attitude i'm sure that you will not sleep peaceful on that particular night it will somewhere be taunting you that maybe i shouldn't have spoken to that person like that maybe i shouldn't have you know insulted him like that in front of everyone so i would say be humble but not to an extreme level because uh, people also do tend to imagine that you're a fool if you're humble everywhere don't be humble everywhere be but be humble at the places that it's required to never throw your attitude always treat people with enough care and affection and show them some, some sort of love these things are something which will never uh which you you might never experience even if you get a lot of money or even, even if you become the world's richest person there are some things that you know these sort of happinesses will will you you might not get it all the time so these are my five points uh for you to stay happy in life and please don't forget this is only the part one there's going to be another part of this video coming up later uh i really hope you guys like the like this video in in case you liked it please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the video if you still haven't i will catch you up on the next video which is how to stay happy in life part 2 great uh I stay happy in my life uh, most of the times I force myself to at least if not and I want you all also to follow these things as much as possible and be happy in life uh, see you all in the next video peace Rack it up rack it up I got a better the bank to make me a safe house shake it up shake it up she got her hands on her knees and she bringing a cake out smoke it up smoke it up I got some gas some